Hello, this is a, a example, or excuse me, this is chapter 11, uh, question number 30. I'd like to do this example, the, the title of the question, Pollutants in Auto Exhausts. It says, light vehicles sold in the United States must emit an average of no more than 0.07 grams per mile of nitrogen oxides. So uh, you, you probably have, if you have a car, you probably have, needed to take your car into the in into those places where they check your exhaust and if if your exhaust is has too many pollutions uh, pollutants then you can't get your you can't renew your driver's license or you can't renew your tabs excuse me um and so that that's the sort of thing that's going on here so uh so the point so the the rule is you can't have more than 0.07 grams per mile of nitrogen oxides coming out of your car all right uh, nitrogen oxides, NOx is nitrogen oxides, emissions for one car model vary normally with a mean of 0.05 grams per mile and a standard deviation of 0.01 grams per mile. All right, so even though they don't ask us to, let's go ahead and make um, a distribution of this. Now, th um, well, it's supposed to be symmetric. Let's pretend that's a, that's a normal curve there. It's a little bit off, but it's close enough. All right. Now, um, this is for the population of all cars. That's, that's what the, this normal curve is. And so it says the mean is 0 0.05. OK, standard deviation 0 0.01. So go up three standard deviations, go down three standard deviations. Very, very convenient, 0.01. So that's just then 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08 and then 0 0.04, 0 0.03, 0 0.02. So out of the entire population of cars, we know 68% of the cars are between 0 0.04 and 0 0.06 grams per mile. 95% of, of cars between 0 0.03, 0 0.07. So there's quite a quite a wide vari variation of, of nitrogen oxides uh, emissions from the general public of, of cars. Now, question A. What is the probability that a single car of this model emits more than 0.07 grams per, per mile of nitrogen oxides? In other words, what's the probability that a car fails the emissions test? So 0.07 is, is right there. Um, so we, we could just solve this very quickly with the 68, 95, 99.7 rule because this is, uh, 0.07 is exa exactly two standard deviations above the mean. So we know that 95% uh, of the um, cars have between 0.03 and 0.07 uh, grams per mile. So you can just go 100% minus 95%. That leaves us with 5% cars that are either super clean down here or super dirty up there. So because the normal curve is symmetric, you can divide that five by two, and then you get 2.5. So roughly, 2.5% of all the cars uh, fail the emissions test. They have more than 0.07 grams per mile. Now, yes, you could, if you want a little bit more precise answer, you can take the 0.07, convert to z-scores, look up on the table, uh, just like we did in chapter three, and, and then you can get your, your, um, your answer that way. And, that, and that's perfectly fine as well. And that's, that's part A, that's the answer to part A right here. So uh, let's just write part A. Right there. Okay, now, um, that's not a chapter 11 question. That was just a chapter 3 question. Now, part B is a chapter 11 question because this is talking about a sampling distribution. All right, so a company has 25 cars of this model in its fleet. So we'll just pretend that's a, a, a random sample of cars that the company just um, picks its cars. They don't pick cars based on how clean they are. They just, they just randomly get 25 cars that they order from the dealer. So we'll pretend that it's a sample of 25 cars. So right there, let's go ahead and write part B, n equals 25. All right, now it says, what is the probability that the, probability that the average, uh, in other words, x bar, uh, the average nitrogen oxide level of these cars is above 0.07 grams per mile? Okay, now let's just look at this from a common sense point of view first. Um, remember, this first normal curve is the whole population of cars, 
And so, yeah, two two and a half percent of the cars are dirty cars. But they fail the emissions test. Now, if you have 25 cars, uh, the most likely outcome is some of the cars will be really have really low emissions. Some cars will have really high emissions. Some cars, or most cars, probably will be here in the middle someplace. So on average, the the average of 25 cars will most likely be around 0.05, right there. Um, and so it's not very likely. First of all, there's only 2.5 percent chance that that one car is going to fail the test. So uh, the probability of the average of 25 cars uh, being above 0.07 is is much smaller than that. Now, let's get a more precise answer. So um, first, we need our sampling distribution. So I'll draw another normal curve. And we can, we can assume it's normal because we have uh, the second rule in Chapter 11. It says if your population is normal, then your sampling distribution is automatically normal. All right, so let's write sampling distribution here. And keep in mind what this means. It's all the possible x-bars that you could get from a sample of size 25. Now the mean of the of the sampling distribution, so the mean of all the possible x bars is going to be uh, 0.05. Because like I said, some when you take it a, a sample some are too high, some are too low, some are just right on average it's going to be the same as the population average. Um, and then some samples will be too a little too high. Some samples will be a little bit too low. Some samples will be just about r the same as 0.05. And on average, of all the samples, it will be the same as the population mean right there. Um, we could, we could if, you, if, if you're getting tired of writing out mean of all possible x bars, you could do this. You could say the mean and then subscript x bar, meaning the mean of all the, all the possible x bars is 0.05 which is not which it's yes it's the population mean but it, it's a it's it's the mean of the x bars not necessarily the, the population mean now the standard deviation of all possible x bars so you can do this also you can do standard deviation of all the possible x bars little subscript there that we know is sigma divided by square root of n um, and sigma in this case is a standard deviation and it tells us standard deviation is 0.01 right there so that's 0.01 divided by square root of n and square root of n well n is 25 so square root 25 okay so the author was very kind to us to make our uh, number a perfect square so square root of 25 is just 5 don't need a calculator for that Okay, and then 0 0.05 divided 0.01 divided by 5 would be 0 0.002. Okay, a super small standard deviation of all the possible sample means. So uh, let's compare that to our original standard deviation of 0.01. Uh, so the the population standard deviation is 0.01, which is telling us that among the cars there's a certain amount of variation among the cars, but out of a sample of 25 cars, there's very little variation anymore among your sample means. Al you're almost guaranteed that your, that your x bar is going to be very, very close to the mean of, of 0.05. All right, so what does this sampling distribution look like? So 0.05 is right in the middle. Okay, let's go up three standard deviations, down three standard deviations. And so uh, plus one standard deviation is 0.052. Two standard deviations is 0.054. Three standard deviations is 0.056. Let's go down three standard deviations here. So 0.048. Another standard deviation down, 0.046. And 0.044. Okay, this tells us, according to the sampling distribution here, 99.7% of all the sample results will be between 0 0.044 and 0 0.056. Um, so back to the original question, what's the probability that the mean is above 0 
it's virtually impossible. Now, yes, there could be some freak of nature uh, sample where you just happen to get 25 cars in a row that are all dirty, for example. Very, very unlikely to happen. Um, now, if you wanted to, you could get a z-score here. z is uh, 0.07, the number we're in interested in, minus the mean, divided by the standard deviation. So that is going to be um, 0 0.02 uh, divided by 0 0.002, which is 10. All right, so if you are so, if you're like the, the luckiest person in the world, or the unluckiest person in the world, depending on how you looked at it, and you got a, you got a, a sample mean that is 10 standard deviations above 0 0.05, then yes, your sample mean would be uh, uh, 0.07. All right, well, 10, that's not even on the chart. So I'm going to say the probability that the x bar, the probability that your sample mean is greater than 0.07 is equal to 0. 10 standard deviations above the mean is so unlikely. For all practical purposes, it's 0. And that is, uh, that is it for this question.